हेलो एंड वेलकम टू टी नोज वॉल्ट एंड गेस वॉट आई हैव अ गुड ओल्ड फ्रेंड अ वेरी वेल नोन नेम फ्रॉम द येस्ट ईयर्स आई नो मेनी ऑफ देम वेर एवर आई मीट वेर एवर आई गो राइडिंग देर बिन सो मेनी पीपल आई बम डिन टू हु आस्क अबाउट वॉट हैपन टू विकास रचमल्ला आई यूज टू वॉच हिज वीडियोज एंड बोथ ऑफ यू स्टार्टेड टूगेदर आई यूज टू लव देर वीडियोज एंड वी हैव अ फ्रेंडशिप एन अक्वेंटेंस for more than nearly 10 years because every time i used to go for a shoot and uh, go to the showroom the initial days sure. and uh, they used to say ipudu oka abbai there was one guy who just came and went uh, do you know vikas Mm-hmm. who is this vikas <laughs> so maybe same thing might have happened to you when you went like some might have told uh, dino has come and gone so uh, we were uh, about to ask or uh, we were wondering who this other creator is who's kind of in the same line and uh, one track day we met True. Uh, and uh, that was mehir's uh, track day i think so yeah, right motivation track motivation days. track day yeah. and uh, that was the uh, first time we met and initially we have uh, you know loads of respect as fellow creators fellow bikers biker brothers and the journey has been long and strong uh, you all know what has happened transpired over the years what youtube was and what it has become now so basically today the main topics that we are going to discuss about is one thing is the title itself as to how to get maximum views how to get noticed on youtube how to get instant fame uh, do i put it like this or uh, get noticed on youtube because there are so many wanna be creators now i just went for uh, eid uh, yeah uh, festival to my friend's place and uh, he told uh, me that uh, if you ask his son what he wants to become yeah. when he's grown up he says he wants to become a youtuber now gone are the days when people used to say i want to become an engineer i want to become a doctor or software engineer uh, or what not but now the answer is different yeah people want to become a youtuber why a youtuber now uh, i'm sure you have the answer to that i'm going to let you speak uh, in a moment uh, but uh, these are the main crux of the topic that we're going to discuss and dwell into is first thing uh, help these wanna be youtubers with whatever knowledge we have earned and how we have garnered our uh, uh, you know uh, subscribers or how yes. we have earned our subscribers see subscribers is about earning yeah. it's never about just getting views or getting uh, uh, you know noted or anything it's about earning people's trust so when people trust invest their trust in every word that you utter and uh, they believe every word you utter then they go and hit that subscribe button yeah. and uh, every individual who has hit that subscribe button now you might have lakhs of followers by now and i have some of uh, my own followers but i we value each and every one of you true Absolutely. and respect each and every one of you because the ultimate thing that defines uh, the uh, soul within is the love for motorcycles or love for automobiles and the love for cars and bikes now so vikas has been uh, initially very aggressive and uh, very uh, up to date and then it uh, uh, became a little bit of a shell for him for some time we're going to get to know that reason yeah. and also we also going to talk about how passionate youtube was and what like, what kind of a passion platform youtube was and what it has become as of late so first because it's all yours thanks first of all uh, thank you for taking time out from his very busy schedule and uh, coming and being part of this podcast it's kind of first of many series that are going to happen heart to heart talk with fellow biker brothers whom you've seen whom you have respected whom you have followed and now we speak our heart out and uh, contribute in whichever week way we can to better the riding community and uh, the better the uh, overall uh, brotherhood that prevails among the biker brothers so so because uh, wh- what would you say uh, initially because we talk about uh, you know maximizing your views so what is what are your tips if you were a creator or if you were to uh, you know of, of course uh, uh, the biker of tomorrow is sid is uh, growing <laughs> up as well so we've yeah. seen up grow and uh, seen him grow so uh, what would be your suggestion to sid if he were to start a youtube channel and uh, how would you uh, you know educate him and how would you motivate him thank you dino thank you for this podcast and uh, great intro you know <laughs> so first of all point number 1 if anyone wants to take up youtube as a career 
then motorcycling is not the genre. Okay. For two reasons. One is, when you wish to make money, make a career on YouTube, you should address the larger audience. Okay. Not a community, but a mass market. So motorcycling in India and around the world is more of a community than an industry, as a matter of fact. Cars is an industry, okay? Uh, mobile phone creators, tech that's creators, industry, yeah. you know? Technology. Exactly. And uh, clothing, that's an industry. Lifestyle, okay. Correct. So, if you wish to take up YouTube as a career, get into cell phone reviews, get into, you know, uh, something which every individual would Cannot want to, do without. Exactly. Would yeah. want to purchase at some stage of their life and would want to purchase every few years. Okay. okay. So it can be food industry. Absolutely. It can be music. It has fashion. to be art, fashion. Exactly. So that, that is why well, those are wise words. Now, if uh, I was a wannabe YouTuber and mm. I was attending one of your subscriber uh, meetup and I uh, go ahead and ask you, because how did you make up your initial subscribers? What are these tips and tricks that you guys follow? What would be your answer? All right. So first of all, I never got into YouTube thinking that I will have a YouTube channel and then I'll produce content and uh, take it so seriously. So it was the year 2012. When I bought my first superbike, the Yamaha R1, okay. and uh, I was riding on the highways, and those days the traffic was probably 70% lesser than what it is today. Exactly. <laughs> I could simply get onto the Kompali highway, and it felt like I was on a freeway. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I used to simply go ride 100 kilometers one way and 100 kilometers back within a couple of hours. And I was thinking, it feels like heaven when exactly. you're riding on exactly. a highway on a superbike. So I should film it, you know, capture the memories. How should I do it? And those days we did not even hear about a GoPro. Yeah. And uh, I made some mounts where I could strap on a cell phone onto my chest and all of that. Uh, however, my mentor, uh, uh, he had GoPros uh, with him. So he gave me a GoPro and asked me to put it onto my helmet, which I did. And I went onto a ride onto the highway. I got back home, put that footage onto my laptop and I was pleasantly shocked it felt like a Hollywood movie, yeah. you know. Oh my God, the point of view, a POV that, you know, I was riding and uh, it, it was something which I never witnessed before. Because at that point of time, probably even in action films, they were not having this kind of an angle. Yeah, exactly. Got it? It was giving the uh, first person view True. to the uh, viewer as if he himself or she herself is riding a motorcycle. And that was not something people had seen or experienced. That was totally out of the box and uh, that is where even international motor vloggers suddenly kind of exploded onto the scene because exploring these beautiful locations, riding a motorcycle, becoming one with nature True. and uh, helping people discover that uh, there's more to motorcycling than just transporting from point A to point B. It True. works like a therapy, it helps you heal your scars, it helps you become a better person, helps you to forgive others, helps you to just embrace life the way it is and move on in life you know not just looking back at uh, all the hurt and pain and the sorrow that people have caused to you but looking further ahead on what lies ahead for you and uh, these this this perspective was something that suddenly you know tr started trending online and uh, yeah well, instead of drifting away from this we'll talk about what motorcycling is how therapy uh, what kind of therapy right. it is uh, vikas has uh, told like it is never about starting a business when you're starting a youtube channel never think that you're starting a business initiative if it's motorcycling <laughs> yeah especially other genres it's pure business yeah other yeah. genres yeah he's saying it is uh, if you want a business perspective you have a studio you have your own team you have uh, you know proper uh, 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 editing uh, and communication, communication skill. and skill yeah. and uh, the way you have to you know engage your audience and uh, keep them up to date with what all is happening in that particular industry. But more than that, if it is motorcycling or anything that you enjoy for that moment, like what I believe in, be it cooking. Uh, uh, have you seen the movie Ratatouille? About I, that uh, little yeah. rat uh, which kind of develops the cooking skills. And despite being a hated uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, 
animal uh, it develops that uh, you know cooking uh, uh, you can skills or art and uh, it's you know uh, the kind of delicacies it comes up with uh, it literally uh, even uh, uh, surprises the guy who's the most shrewd judge over there so it is all about following your heart and uh, trying to do what you love and love what you do this is what i keep saying like when you do what you love with all your heart with all your mind and all your strength that shows that becomes uh, you know uh, infectious and that uh, connects with the audience that the every word that comes from your heart immediately hits the audience hard i mean sure. they they relate with it so that is something that i want to share with you guys all you want to be youtubers like even me it was never that uh, they had to uh, script or uh, uh, the like because when he goes for a ride he won't script uh, uh, that i am going to take this r1 to this particular place and do this kind of a thing and then go to some chai bandi and do this and then come back home on the uh, way back i am going to meet some uh, uh, you know kulfi wala or something gets get his reactions it was never it was never scripted it was yeah. all as it happened was being captured and was showcased so that is the point that we are trying to make never try to dramatize or enact or uh, try to make a big boss out of it it has to be unscripted it has to be from the heart it has to hit the audience hard where it matters and secondly now the most important thing uh, the tips and tricks so what i believe is the title is something that uh, matters what do you guys uh, say vikas uh, so uh, you're talking now, about uh, hmm. the uh, how to gain views this is the first point the second point we'll uh, get into in the second half of the podcast yeah. first half is how do these, do these guys uh, get themselves noticed on youtube if it is a new channel first thing is the title i believe right getting the title uh, right or what what do you think about it see there are ethical ways to do it there are uh, you know <laughs> not so ethical Different. ways to do so, it so but let yeah. us uh, stick to ethical ways <laughs> and the straight yeah. uh, straight line ways because we don't uh, believe in that shortcuts to uh, fame True. or anything because we have not come uh, in that route either True. so let us uh, talk about the by the book method that Correct. which youtube uh, community or youtube forums also is thing yeah you can share uh, what you think when i mentioned that there are ethical ways and unethical ways both are textbook okay okay see if you follow the most ethical way then your journey becomes extremely slow okay and uh, probably uh, you can never make a career out of it okay you know it can remain as a very good hobby okay uh, but if you at least want the hobby to pay for itself now see you can have a youtube channel where you're not making a profit okay. but when you're buying a motorcycle maintaining it going on tours if your youtube channel is able to generate enough revenue to pay for that hmm. then your hobby is being paid for yeah okay it's not coming out of your hard earned taxed money yeah so uh, simple one is for an example if i go out and review the kawasaki you know 600 cc motorcycle i can simply put a title saying that reviewing kawasaki 600 cc so and so that's it okay but here okay in today's date Okay for an example if this would have been 2014 and i put that title it would still do well it is to do well because very less creators were there exactly <laughs> but today okay what happens is that people do not get a kick out of the title oh, yeah, you are riding a you know 600 cc so what so there are so many other people who made content like that so what people generally do it do is they put a thumbnail where there is kind of uh, a clickbait where uh some close call or uh, uh they can say uh six reasons not to buy a 6r a negative exactly. a negative title true so six yeah. reasons not to buy a 6r six reasons not to go for an interceptor something like that so what that does is uh, a negative feedback is hard to come these days so everyone the auto journals or everyone will put a report of how it feels to ride the right feel and the comfort and the handling and the riding dynamics but what vikas is trying to here to say if you want to stand out if you want to get noticed immediately the easiest way is to go that negative way i mean you can say that 
then uh, you can put a title as if the not so good things or the things I hate about my ZX6R. Sure. And that will again immediately provoke people, okay, what is he going to talk about 6R, right. which he didn't like? Now, right. I've already seen 10 videos where uh, the good things of 6R have been talked about. Now, let me see this particular video where only the negatives are going to be talked about. So, that seems to be one of the ways to get yourself noticed if you're starting a YouTube channel. So, that is a title. Then what else matters? Does the description matter? Does the tags matter? Like, how do you go about it? So, of course, the thumbnail matters a lot. Thumbnail matters a lot, yeah. Yeah. So, thumbnail and the title. These are the two major important uh, things to Correct. get noticed. Or uh, And what else, uh, Vikas? Description matters if it is a technical video. For an example, I'm talking about how to rebuild an engine, which engine it is. And then, if I write five, six lines in the description, and use all the important keywords like four cylinder, piston, crankshaft and all of this of so and so motorcycle. And if someone is searching for the solution on Google, Google, not even YouTube, then your video will still get pulled. Popped up. Okay. So the metadata will work. Correct. And SEO will work in by using the keywords. So Correct. the keywords relevant to the topic that is being showcased is very, very important. So that is for the description and then the hashtags. Hashtags don't, ma don't work matter much any on, long. No, okay. they work on Instagram okay. and uh, Facebook, but are not on YouTube. Not on YouTube. Okay, you got yeah. that. Now, another thing that I would like to say as a creator is, one thing that I noticed is, when you are a uh, new creator, uh, the, you need to get a hold of the YouTube algorithm. Okay. So, how do you get or use a cheat code to get yourself into this YouTube algorithm, which is a giant mega program which is running on its whole and it's like a giant ball that is rolling and you know catching uh, new youtubers all along so how to get into that uh, role is one thing that i kind of figured out is you have a scheduled time minimum thing is consistency first thing if you uh, do one video today and one video one month later there's no way that you're going to get noticed or no way that you're going to get anywhere despite you putting the greatest of efforts right. and state-of-the-art tech into your video it is not going to go anywhere beyond your home maybe <laughs> so what matters is consistency and the same genre and the subject which you have uh, you know chosen has to be followed because all the audience who are going to flock into your channel are going to, if it is motorcycling, they want to know more and more about motorcycling. If it is food, they want to know more and more about new delicacies and new recipes. If it is music, it is the same way. If it is comedy, it has to be the same way. So the more you post consistently and at a scheduled interval, say for instance, Tuesday morning, nine o'clock is my first video. And maybe Friday morning, 9 o'clock or night, 9 o'clock is my second video. So you schedule it accordingly at two, you just make up two uh, time stamps where you want to actually upload your videos so that your audience is aware that every Friday night, you're going to upload one video and every Tuesday morning, you're going to get a new video. And that's how the algorithm over time, when you do this consistently for six or seven months, the algorithm understands that Vikas Rachamala's video is coming up every Tuesday at 9 a.m. and Friday at in a consistent time span, in a lifespan. So they understand that, first of all, you're a serious creator. Secondly, they have understood that you are maintaining a scheduled timing, just like a TV serial. You are uploading it on time and that's how the algorithm catches you. So this is one thing I wanted to share. Now, this was the first part of the discussion. The second part is the heart-to-heart -heart discussion as creators, as people who have journeyed all along. So both of us started together. Even Power Drift started almost at the same timeline. So a lot of auto content started uh, generating. But there was a wonderful time back then when we used to just go for, just like what he explained, that uh, early morning he went on a R1. And uh, some people here who are helping me behind the scenes have also seen your videos. And that Vikas Rachamalla, who used to talk, you know, fluently with, uh, ha you know, words flowing out of his heart, has suddenly gone missing. But, okay, there might be a reason, personal reason no, behind this. I can talk about Yeah, he yeah, is going to talk about that as well. But what was YouTube back then? Such a passion platform where there were no restrictions, 
no limitations where it was just uh, uh, you know connecting with the world with your heart and uh, you know without any uh, you know question marks or any kind of uh, uh, hassles or any kind of uh, ifs and buts in your mind so but first you talk about your journey as to what uh, vikas chamalla was so consistent and then what got you busy in between and also we can talk about what youtube has become now absolutely so as dino mentioned that yes i was extremely consistent and uh, things were going great as a matter of fact in 2016 uh, youtube uh, india okay. uh, made me the ambassador okay yeah yeah for i YouTube. remember that you know me yeah. and mahatali yeah. uh, we were representing hyderabad and it was a great journey uh, so i was ambassador for youtube for 2016 2017 and 2018 okay. it's a great honor and uh, in 2019 i was also on the fan fest yeah uh, so i mean you know uh, that time my channel was getting about 3 million 4 million views every single month it was doing okay. great so now point one is that why did i all of a sudden almost stop making videos you know uh i was making one me- video probably once in 2 3 months or so i almost took a gap of 3 4 6 months sometimes the reason is as i mentioned earlier i never started youtube so that it could be my career okay okay so, so i had more of a hobby. leverage yeah. yeah it was a very serious leverage i mean a serious hobby so i had the leverage to take a break from it okay. if i needed to you know was youtube giving me money absolutely yes you know right from the day when when i started the channel got monetized within a month the money was coming in uh yes adsense money was coming in sponsorship money was coming in sponsorship in the sense i review products yeah. right so there is a professional fees that you charge when you review a product okay. and when people buy from your links there is an affiliate uh, you know commission, commission you get from that okay. so there are about 3 to 4 different kinds of income that income you generation get. okay and especially that time pre covid the amount of money that was coming in from youtube was phenomenal yeah. you know uh however i in 2019 sat down and i calculated at that point of time i had 12 years of corporate experience okay, okay that's a lot of corporate experience and uh, uh, about 8 years of media experience that is youtube yeah. you know public speaking uh, uh, creating content yeah. yeah you know all of this so and i thought hey now this is the time i was about 34 years old that time and i decided that this is this is the time that if i wish to start my own companies have my own startups then i should do it now you know? okay so i went into entrepreneurship okay. in the year 2019 and i was completely focusing on setting up my company setting up the teams and that has been a great journey too of course i lost considerable amount of money into it but gained unbelievable level of experience, experience yeah. and i always keep saying this if you lose money and you gain experience you lost nothing, nothing yeah. you only gained yeah so because money is the only thing which can be earned again in your yeah, life. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so that way 2019 went by 2020 then covid happened yeah covid happened uh, then uh, now uh, but again in 2022 i started a telugu channel okay why the reason is that i knew with so much of work that i am doing with regards to my startups and my profession in the software industry i do not have the time to go out and ride motorcycles and make videos okay okay so you have to manage so many things at a time that you couldn't find time Uh, correct to, to again go out sit and back write. and yeah, write and again come back and edit those videos correct and, okay but i could sit on a table and talk about something okay so that is when i started the telugu channel and started talking about life career relationships yeah, sure. businesses yeah. and all of that yeah. and that is doing decently well okay. so i never went away from youtube completely but was making very few motorcycle related uh, content content yeah but thanks to you all you know i mean people forget movie stars if they <laughs> go away for 2 3 years yeah, or yeah. something like that but even now the number of messages that i get okay okay when i go out people, people recognize meet, you yeah you know across the country you know even um, a few other countries nearby it is phenomenal people people haven't forgotten people are waiting for Maybe. me to get back and make videos because i had some level of uniqueness you know 
which people mentioned that they are missing. And uh, I made a video recently on my uh, JSXR 1000 mentioning that I'm going to come back very soon, you know. And I think I'm back. I okay. think I'm back. <laughs> okay. So you're going to start being a little more consistent Absolutely, now? yes. Okay. Yes. So this time so, you have a little more uh, leverage of time when you are, the startups are all in auto mode and now you have a little bit of time to correct. get back to your hobby and uh, that is correct. explore the motorcycle. Okay, yeah. That's good news for all uh, Vikas uh, <laughs> uh, fanboys. And one more thing is the YouTube scene. Now it is not the same YouTube that uh, we used to experience 10 years ago. It has changed completely. So what has changed? What do you think? The term Y-O-U T U B E. The whole meaning of YouTube is you. You are expressing yourself. yourself. Okay. Yeah. That is the reason the founder of YouTube named it YouTube. You know? uh, not others tube. <laughs> you don't have to please others. Yeah. You have to express yourself. That is the yeah. primary reason why would someone go on to YouTube and make videos. Okay. If you uh, produce a movie, there is censorship. You have to adhere to the censor government loss, laws yeah. and all of that censor laws. If you are into publication, there is of course freedom of speech, but still there are a lot of implications of what you can say, what you cannot, cannot say. say. But YouTube was the only platform where you could talk about anything. anything. You, know, you could talk about politics, you could talk about anything which has enormous yeah. amount of controversy and still reserve your rights of uh, being able to do that. Uh, however, you know, when money started to get into YouTube, Okay, that was like 2017, 18, you know. And we're talking about serious amount of money here. Serious, okay. So, uh, people who were primarily into it as a profession. I mean, see, yeah, money is something which very few people can say no to. It's hmm. not easy. I mean, you know, some brand is ready to pay you lakhs of rupees, okay, to uh, talk slightly good about them. Okay, brand will not tell you that you have to talk good about them. Yeah. Okay, no brand will do that. No brand has done that so done far. Done that so far. Yeah. But when you're getting paid hmm. to review something, then by default you... I tend to be a little inclined towards... True. In terms of being partial towards the brand. Correct. But uh, when it comes to two-wheeler, uh, this hmm. thing, what I've uh, experienced is... Uh, Mostly for media reviews and launch reviews, so yeah. no brand pays to anyone. So it's all okay. just media launch or uh, just a fresh bike launch. Yeah. What happens is like what you've done, like uh, he has explored uh, uh, jackets, or riding okay. gear or helmets or new boots. So that is where when there's a new startup, sure. a new product comes up. First of all, they need to get noticed. How do they get noticed? They can't just uh, spend lakhs or millions of rupees on advertising because they are a startup. So, But what they can do is approach an influencer like Vikas who already has the exact target audience Correct. such that they can be notified that there is a product like a new boot that has been launched or a new backpack that has been launched or a new jacket. So it is a mutual benefit where he is spending professional time and putting effort and you know investing some uh, money also trying to get a good content and deliver that product the way it present that product the way it is supposed to be presented and right. educate people about what it actually is and that's where you know paid uh, partnership comes Correct. so paid promotion comes so that is the paid promotion of accessories or any kind of uh, new uh, product that might uh, launch in the relative industry uh, but uh, as Vikas said, there is no brand that uh, comes uh, straight to the uh, reviewer or a YouTuber and says Brother, uh, sister, I'm going to pay you this money. You better talk good about this. Yeah. So far, there is not even a single brand that has done that. And that is what keeps uh, things neutral. And that is what keeps hope alive that people believe in their product. Yeah. So if they don't believe in their product, that's when they come and say you talk good about it. But when they believe in the product, the product does the talking for you. So you just experience the product and express yourself as to what you think about the product. Yeah. So that is how uh, it has been. So... YouTube, I feel, uh, which was a passion platform, as I keep saying, because you can express your passion, showcase your passion yeah. without any limits. But now there has been a lot of corporate control that has come in. Correct. We have MCNs trying to pull down solo creators, uh, not giving them the liberty to showcase their, this thing. So there have been a lot of videos, a lot of solo creators. Uh, there was even kind of a wave when a kind of a revolution uh, you know, sta started uh, happening that uh, these MCNs are trying to pull down the solo creators and uh, project uh, the people who are part of MCNs. What is your take on this? First of all, MCN means a multi-channel network. 
Yeah, he's going to explain more about it. So there are two types of creators, as uh, Dean already mentioned. One is a solo creator, like what we are. We are individuals. Individual, of course, right. we have teams helping us, but uh, it's not a company. It's not. A company. Okay. So now, multi-channel network. The meaning of it is that, for an example, if I set up a company, okay, it's a media company. It's a proper media Indeed. company, and if someone wants to start a YouTube channel, okay, someone who is interested, they have the communication skill, they have the presentable looks, uh, it could be fashion, then we assist that channel, okay, probably provide equipment, probably train them how to do it, help them with edits, help them with thumbnails, thumbnails. and all of that. Help them with the music that needs to be used. Correct. Music is a big deal on YouTube. It's extremely difficult to find copyright, copyright free, free music, music yeah. on YouTube. So as a new solo creator, okay, for an example, if there's a girl, okay, who wants to talk about fashion, fashion. or makeup, okay, it's it'll be very difficult her for her to start off on her own because the equipment itself will set you back a few lakh rupees, yeah. okay, and then you need a place in your house to sit and be able to uh, you know have like a dedicated studio. So an MCN can even provide a studio. All of that they can do. In return, what they do is, they take away your freedom. Freedom, yeah. <laughs> so that girl, she will sign a contract, contract exactly. with an MCN. Like for an example, if I have an MCN, multi-channel network company, I will tell that girl that for the next five years, okay, all the revenue that's coming to your channel first will come to me, okay, and I will route it. Back to through you. this, yeah. whatever percentage, percentage they need, correct. Because of the services they are, see, MCNs are also, in a way, good for starter people correct. who have just started up, who don't know how to, uh, which way to go as creators, correct. how to grow as creators. Yes. But uh, is it true that uh, they are also trying to target these solo creators and bring them down just to get the people in their brigade noticed? Is uh, is that something that you have heard of late? True. See, what happens is that, okay. MCNs exactly know how the algorithm works, works okay. okay, because that's a job. They spend every single day in to understanding and uh, yeah. And YouTube algorithm keeps changing. Okay. Why does it change? What? Because according to the advertiser, for an example, if this one year YouTube's primary advertiser is in the cell phone industry, their algorithm will be towards cell phone videos, you yeah. know, primarily yeah. because they have to do business. See, this is how it works. YouTube. Whatever money they are getting, for an example, if YouTube gets $1 billion this year as an ad revenue, YouTube keeps 55%, 45% and 55 is to the creator. creators. Exactly. Got it? So, uh, it is very fair, very fair. Very I mean, they fair. are doing yeah. all the tech work, the Everything. servers, the you know, uh, cloud storage and all of that, cyber security, and they are still only keeping 45%. 45% to them. So, uh, so that way, uh, MCNs, what they do is, if, for an example, a girl is starting her own channel, she gained three, four thousand subscribers, immediately MCN will send an email that join us. And if she declines the offer, she says, I do not wish mm. to join you, then what they will do is they'll not try to pull her down, but when MCN is sub supporting some other girl in the same genre, she will, she will do much better. Oh. It will be a much easier uh, walk for her oh. to climb up the ladder. ladder okay. So, indirectly, uh, she is getting pulled down. Pulled down, yeah. So, words of wisdom, very well put by uh, Vikas. Because these are uh, topics that are not dwelt upon, not talked about much. But uh, because he has vast experience and the right person to talk about such kind of things, we talked about it. And I think we have come to the end of this podcast. We don't want to drag it much. We wanted to keep it to the point. Thanks, Vikas, for your Thank valuable you. time. And uh, wishing him all the best for the upcoming vlogs that you're going to do. I'm sure you're going to talk about yes. all the relevant stuff. And keep this brotherhood alive. Absolutely. Uh, because in the every time uh, yeah. he has... Uh, yeah, we're going to sit down because we yeah. get <laughs> cameras are set that way. So, yeah. Uh, there was one time I was taking uh, this uh, some award or something that uh, silver play button. Mm. I had called him just 24 hours prior and immediately, despite his busy schedule, I know he works and it was a working day. He came, he wished me wholeheartedly and I'll never forget that because, because that talks about the brotherhood and the respect as a fellow creator yeah. that you have for me. As like We've been doing this together. The journey has been so such a long time. So that is what keeps things alive. And for the betterment of the community, we're going to make things better, educate more young folks and uh, help them uh, create better content for uh, 
uh, the better of everyone, the better better world, creating a better world in and of itself. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed Thank this you. podcast. More series coming up. If you like what you see and want to see more of this, feel free to comment below and let me know. And catch you guys in the next episode. Cheers. Bye-bye.